Many people across the country, maybe even you, refuse to get a government job. This could mean a higher paying job for you if you go and get a government job, but you won't do it. So I've actually did a little bit of research and I figured out some of the main reasons why people simply refuse to get a government job. Number one is security clearances. There's this idea that if you get a government job, you will require a security clearance or a top secret clearance. That's not true. Every day on usajobs.gov where the government jobs are, eight to 10,000 jobs do not require a clearance whatsoever. The actual number of jobs that require top secret clearances, that's under 10%. Now, if you are required to go through that process, yeah, it will be lengthy. It will be a little intrusive. They'll do a little bit of digging. So it's understandable why people might want to avoid those type of positions. The good news is there's a filter on usajobs.gov. So you can search for a government job and you can rest assured that there's no clearance requirement. For the majority of these federal government jobs, we're talking about a basic background check. They'll look at your criminal history. You'll have to submit consent to do a credit check. And as long as your income to debt ratio isn't too crazy, I mean, that should be about it. The next one is the pay. Most people assume that if they have to take a government job, they're going to be getting less pay than in the private sector. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. But if you look at the national average for salaries in the United States, it's around 60,000 a year. And for federal government employees, it's 90,000 a year. And if you're looking at major cities, it's even higher than that. When it comes to compensation, you can't just look at the salary. You have to give some attention to the benefits because the benefits include work-life balance, job security, so you don't have to work worry about getting laid off, and then a pension for the rest of your life. You have money coming in. Now, sure, some industries will always outcompete the public sector. Looking at the IT industry, maybe in certain sales jobs, you're going to earn $200,000, $250,000 a year. Government can't touch that. So I understand that part. But occasionally, I speak with people that make $250,000 a year. And guess what? They're interested in a government job because they've made their money for 10 or 15 years. And now they're at a point in their life where they're valuing the benefits more than the annual salary. If you're watching this and maybe you don't agree with any of these reasons, if you want me to email you virtual federal hiring events every week that you can attend from anywhere, sign up to the free newsletter down below. The next one is political uncertainty. I hear this one a lot too, especially when it comes to the end of the fiscal year. People talk about government shutdowns. How is that going to impact me? Is it going to disrupt me? And the answer is yes, to a degree, a shutdown will disrupt you. But you have to consider that you're going to get back paid. So even though you're shut down, maybe you don't go to work for a week, two, three weeks, all that time that you're not working after the government resumes, you're getting a check. That money is going into your bank account. Also, not very much changes from administration to administration. When Trump was coming into office, a lot of people were worried. He was going to shake things up. What would happen? Maybe job security would be compromised. When it came from Trump leaving office and Biden getting into office, from a government employee perspective, very little changed. Now, sure, the executives are switched out, so they're shuffled around. You have your senior executives in every agency. They're going to come and go with president administrations, but it's not going to impact you very much on a day-to-day -day basis. Next is bureaucracy. The government is known for taking a long time to get anything accomplished, and this is pretty much evident when it comes to the hiring process. It takes a long time. There are processes that you cannot influence or impact, and they will simply take a long time to accomplish. That turns a lot of people off. But if you're entering in the government as a leader, you will have some, some influence on the culture of that office. So you can make small incremental changes and know that you're having an impact, not just on the people in the office, but a lot of times you could impact the citizens across the country. My overall belief is regardless if you're in the private sector or the public sector, listen, you and me, we're replaceable. Like a cog in a machine, we can be replaced. So you should not have such blind loyalty to an organization where you're not recognizing that there's another opportunity that you can jump to in order to improve your condition, in order to improve where you're at in life. So do not fall into that complacency mindset where you think the only place for you is where you're at right now. No, there's a better place for you. There's other opportunities out there for you. Next is the location. 
people have this idea that if you want to work in the federal government, you have to come here to Washington, D.C., and that's not true. Almost every medium-sized town out there, there's a VA office, there's a Social Security Administration office, there's also a post office. There are a lot of opportunities, even in small rural towns, where you can work for the federal government. Not just that, but more and more we're seeing remote work opportunities, 100%. You can be anywhere. You can hop in an RV and just travel the country if you want with Wi-Fi and a laptop and get a lot of this stuff knocked out. So do not limit yourself and say, I'm only in a small town, so there's nothing else for me. That might not be necessarily true. With remote work, there's usually between 400 and 600 jobs that are 100% remote work you can apply for each and every day. But not just that, when it comes to administrative jobs, and the federal government is largely comprised of a bunch of administrative jobs. With that, there is a teleworking option for a lot of them. Even though it doesn't even say it in the job announcement, it doesn't mention it. When you get onboarded and you have the discussion with your supervisor, you will discover many times that you can telework from the house, maybe two, three times a week. So even though you have to come into the office maybe once or twice a week, you still have the flexibility. You can work from your couch or work from your bed or wherever you like to do your work. But there are some people that cannot stand the federal government. They don't like anything that it represents. And I know because these people interact with some of my videos. They leave some comments. Oftentimes, they're hateful comments. For these people, there's nothing I can do or say that will convince them that there's a better opportunity in the government. Even if it meant doubling their salary, they still want nothing to do with it. But for most people, I think the reason why they're not applying and trying to get a government job is it's unclear. The federal hiring process is confusing and a lot of people don't understand it. But if you're interested in a government job and you want to see more of a comparison of how does it look when you take the private sector, the average common typical private sector path, you want to see a comparison with the federal government path. If that interests you, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.